Hello everybody and welcome to your next C Sharp XNA platformer tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to continue where we left off. So last tutorial was a bit vague uh, but hopefully this one you uh, I'll be able to open up a bit more but there's just a lot of code to cover so we're going to be kind of finishing off the code and then the explanation will come after if it becomes confusing okay. Okay, so now we got the entity manager class done. Um, and so uh, what we got to do now is we got to go to the tile class. Okay, now uh, we're going to make a new function. And we're going to call this uh, update collision. Okay, and it's going to take in the entity. Okay, so what's gonna do? This is gonna handle the collision for us. So we can just copy this, just all of this, uh, from here. So it's gonna have its own uh private method in order to handle uh collision. <coughs> Now, instead of uh, player, we're going to switch this with E for entity. So do control H, wherever we see player, going to switch it with E. <coughs> Sorry. So now the entity doesn't have a rect, I don't believe. It, it was the player class that we did it with. So let's just cut this property. Go to entity, and where we place the properties, we'll just paste it in there. Okay, so uh, this should be all good, right? So we just put E there, put E there. So everything should be fine, right? But it isn't. Um, and what we have to do is we got to make a new variable in our entity class, and we're going to call this... Uh, We'll say bool, uh, we'll call it on tile, okay? And we will make this a get and set. So public bool on tile get. And set. Okay? So we're going to go back to the tile class and what we see on tile, we're going to switch that to E dot on tile. So E dot on tile and E dot on tile. So instead of having on tile for uh, here, I guess a more suitable name, uh, we'll, we'll just put contains entity, okay? So if anything, <coughs> if any entity or whatever is on, <coughs> if any entity is on the platform, then that's going to be true, right? So let's go down here. So if on tile and contains entity. Now, why do we do this? Right. Uh, the reason why we do this is that we want to check if the actual entity say we have two players or say say uh, say we have when we have multiple enemies or something like that. Right. Uh, if on if we if we just set on tile for the actual um, platform itself. Right. This is what's going to happen. So uh, say. uh our player or our, our enemy is on uh, on a certain tile, right? What's gonna happen is that's gonna say on tiles equal to true, right? But um, our player itself is not gonna be in the vicinity of that, and therefore our player's gravity is gonna be activated when it really shouldn't be activated, and it's gonna put problems. What we do right here is we're gonna say that if our player is on a tile, and if 
this is the right tile, right? So if we're on a tile and this is the tile that we're on, then we activate this thing, right? We activate this um, if statement, okay? Uh, so if let's say on tile is false and we'll say contains entity equals false right here and right here when we say e dot on tile we'll say contains entity is equal to true okay uh so that should fix uh that should fix the uh the updating collisions so now let's go to our gameplay screen and let's implement this and let's see uh if we got any errors or something so instead of having the player class oh one thing you have to do sorry um the same way that we made the player class you need to uh get an enemy image as well so i went to the same website created that if you want to use a different spreadsheet it's up to you uh so i saved mine because i was doing this in a different folder so oh sorry so mine's in this content so i'll just copy this and we'll go to xname platformer and I'll paste in oh so we already already have one in there oh that's cool okay so anyways uh, we'll go to the content folder we'll say add existing item and we'll just add an enemy we'll have more enemies later on uh, but yeah so instead of putting player we'll put entity manager and we'll say player and I'm um, if you want you can make the entity class abstract because I don't think that we'll actually be implementing it actually it depends I'm not really sure but if you like you can test it out see if that'll work so we'll make a uh, we'll make one for a player and for enemies okay so now we're gonna say player equal to new entity entity manager and same for enemies do not do this don't do enemies or something like that don't do that because it's going to treat them as the same instance so whenever you treat change something with enemies it's going to change that in player and when you change it in player it's going to and so on and so forth it's going to treat them like the same instance and you don't want to do that so we're going to do like so so right now we're going to call player dot load content and the entity type is a player make sure you spell it the same way as you spelt spelled the player class okay or you're gonna get an error so we pass in the content the file name is load slash player dot cme uh the identifier we'll put string empty for that and we have the input for the enemy now enemies load content we put enemy from the enemy class content load slash and i made a new file uh oh i didn't even uh put that in so i'm gonna add an existing item from a previous project from the project i was working on And this is called enemies.cme. And in here, I have the different levels, how many, which enemies are gonna be in the different levels. So right now, uh, this is level one, and uh, this has the same properties and, and stuff. And we'll set the move speed for this one to be, uh, let's say 80, which make it a bit slower than the player. Okay, uh, so what we're gonna do in the gameplay screen let's get that back up is we're gonna say load enemies dot CME uh, but the identifier this time is gonna be uh, level one okay and we're gonna put input in there okay so uh, let me see how much time we have okay so we're gonna call uh, player dot update so we just have to put the game time and put the map in there. And we're going to put enemies, update, game time, map. Now, <coughs> we need to change another thing in the tile quickly before this tutorial ends. So we don't need to make a reference to the player. And this should be a reference to an entity. 
Okay. Um. So what we gotta do now? We gotta go to layer class. Let's open up layer and map. So in the layer, we can get rid of this. Get get rid of that, and we'll say update collision. A new method. Ref entity. E. And we'll just copy this. And we'll say update collision. And we'll put ref E. Okay? So that will update the collision. For the map, we can get rid of this. Get rid of that. And we'll try to make a new method. Update collision. Ref entity. And then we'll call layer dot update collision. Okay. And uh, we go to the gameplay screen. Get rid of this. And <coughs> we'll call map update collision. Ref. And there's a there's some stuff that we're gonna have to do now with that. So, you know what? The time is getting long, so I'm going to end it here, and then we'll finish it off in the next tutorial. So, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. So that's it for now, and bye.